Hey, what is up guys? So it's Nine here, coming at you with another new video. And with the start of 2022, probably a lot of new players are gonna be playing Valorant for the very first time this year. So I decided I wanted to make the ultimate or complete or comprehensive Valorant settings guide going over everything you need to know as a new player to set you up for success in Valorant. So we're going to be starting out with our video settings and what should be the simplest thing is our resolution and aspect ratio. I personally play on the default aspect ratio of 69 at full HD and 1920 by 1080 and I know a lot of people even if you come from Counter-Strike especially may tend to go towards the 4-3 aspect ratio at a 1280 by 960 resolution. Now the thing is it does not give you the same competitive advantages it does in Valorant as it does in CSGO. In CSGO the reason you really want to play with those kind of settings is because it widens the view model or the player models I would say of enemies so they look wider on your screen. Well this isn't necessarily the case with Valorant as enemy player models look exactly the same on 16 by 9 as they do on 4 by 3 and that is because Valorant has a locked aspect ratio. So definitely this is more of a personal preference setting. If you play a lot of Counter-Strike and you've been playing 4-3 your entire life then definitely you can equip your 4-3 but in Valorant it really only stretches out your UI so it looks a little bit weird to me and I've always just played games on the standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio so that's what I go with here in Valorant but definitely something you can mess around with and if you need an extra FPS boost then yes going down to that lower resolution will also give you an FPS boost and moving over into our graphic settings you definitely want to be having multi-threaded rendering on as it says here it really just gives you better performance and utilizes all the CPU cores CPU cores of your CPU so definitely just really an FPS boost for free so definitely be turning multi-threaded rendering on as for material quality texture quality detail quality UI quality these are all just graphical settings and I personally put them all on low to get the maximum FPS boost that I can and honestly I was recently trying out these settings all on high and honestly the game looks and feels really weird to me but maybe it's just because I've been playing it on all low settings for so long I think the game looks perfectly fine with all the settings on low there's no real competitive advantage to keeping any of those on high or medium so I definitely keep them all on low the game looks perfectly fine and I get the maximum FPS boost uh, Vignette I have on off and VSync I definitely also have on off. VSync notorious for causing input lag and so you definitely want to have that turned off. Now for anti-aliasing, I know a lot of people have this turned off, but honestly it makes the game look a bit too pixelated for me at times, especially around the edge of my gun, around the edge of enemies, and uh, the edges of certain walls. So I personally put this on all the way to the highest, but you don't have to it will cost you some fps so you can have that off if you really don't care and it doesn't bother you but if you want a little bit of smoothness you can put it on fxaa or one of the msaa options i keep mine on msaa for buy and then when it comes to anisotropic filtering i keep that all the way on low it can put more load on your gpu and honestly it's not worth it it sharpens things like my gun like obviously my gun looks more detailed and sharp when it's on 16 than when i have it on one but personally having it on one it looks perfectly fine and i have no loss of fps and now into the other settings improved clarity is something you can mess around with but i personally have not found any real benefit from improved clarity the game looks virtually the same to me so i personally keep that off you can experiment with that a little bit if you feel like it improves the clarity for you then you can go ahead and turn that on when it comes to experimental sharpening i really don't like that setting on it makes the game look i like it says very sharp but it's definitely something that throws me off and I definitely keep it on off so that I have maximum performance and my game looks fine right when it comes to bloom and distortion those things don't really give you any sort of advantage I keep them off they're honestly a bit distracting and when it comes to cast shadows this is not the shadows of enemies or your own shadows it's really just for like the way shadows get displayed on your weapon like you can see on my phantom here as opposed to off 
really doesn't make any sort of difference. I keep that setting off maximum performance and you're good to go. And then moving over into our general settings. Now, something very important here is enemy highlight color. Now, on the default, it starts with red, which is fine for most people, but definitely I've found that keeping it on yellow or even purple gives me way much more visibility of the enemies than opposed to the default red. It just stands out a lot more on a lot of the map backgrounds in the game. So I definitely like to keep that on yellow or purple. You can try out which one you like. And if red works for you, then you can go ahead and keep red, right? And also because it's yellow, I have a red cross here, which stands out even stronger on those. So that's something you keep in mind too, depending on what enemy highlight color you have that might determine what crosshair color you could end up using. And then we can see now we're over onto mouse sensitivity. And the most important thing you need to understand with sensitivity that it is fairly personal preference, but there definitely is a range that if you take a large sample size of the pro players, you'll find that they have an EDPI range of 250 to 300. And if you don't know what EDPI is, it simply is your in-game sensitivity multiplied by your mouse DPI. So for me, I play on a much higher sensitivity and I have a sensitivity of 0 0.565 at a 800 DPI, which puts me at around 450 on EDPI, which is definitely much higher than the pro average. And it's just what I feel comfortable with. And I've been slowly lowering it this season as the act has been going. I've been slowly lowering it. I probably will continue a little bit until I can keep my aim very stable. But definitely as a base, I would try to put my sensitivity or my EDPI within that 250 to 300 range and just use that as a starting off point and if you feel like it's too slow and you want to up it up a little bit start upping it a little bit until you feel comfortable or if it's somehow too fast then of course you can lower it down but that is definitely a great base to start off on invert mouse I keep on off raw input buffer the beta experimental I just keep on off and when it comes to your minimap you want your minimap to you know be large and you want to have all the entire map visible so i keep my rotate on um keep player centered off if you have your player centered on the on setting then you won't be able to see the entire map at all times because it will keep your player cam centered which will sometimes put like half of the map unable to be seen by you so i put keep player centered on off for minimap size, I have that on one with a minimap zoom of 0 0.9. Vision cones on, that way I can see what angles my teammates are holding and what direction they're looking so that I can have peace of mind that, hey, I can walk here because my teammate is holding this angle. And when it comes to show region names, I keep that on always so that I can make callouts, especially if uh, you're a newer player, you definitely wanna be using that so that you can be making callouts for your team on, if you don't know the map super well, it'll show you the names of all the different areas, right? And then of course we have your privacy settings, which I all keep on off because I'm not a streamer, so I, I don't need streamer mode on. For first person handedness, I keep on right because I'm right handed. If you're left handed, you can put it on there. Inventory, I put on on so that in the pre-round phase before the round starts, I can see the inventory of my teammates, know that, hey, they're full buying or they're saving. I can quickly just glance at them and then I will see that. When it comes to mature content, I keep most of those settings on. You can decide to keep those off if you want. Like I prefer to have blood and corpses on, but you can also keep those off if you prefer the way it looks. And some people like to have show corpses on off as it makes sometimes uh, the corpses can be distracting and it makes it easy as a sage player to know what player you're resing. You won't really mess that up if you have it off. So you can have that off if you want to, but I keep it on on. Uh, anything else important here for network buffering? I keep that on minimum. If you're playing with a lot of ping, like high ping and a lot of packet loss, then you definitely want to up this. But ideally, you want to get that checked out and fixed so you don't have to play with this. But this definitely will help if you're experiencing like a lot of packet loss to um, not be as jittery, not be teleporting as much. So you can change that. But if your ping and is fine, your internet is fine, you definitely keep that on the minimum now moving over into your keybinds now this is pretty much purely 
you know what you want to use this is definitely preferences you really just want to find what's comfortable for you what allows you to move fast but i will say as a general tip you want to find keybinds that allow you to have as much range of motion while using your abilities so for me i have my sova dart on my mouse button that way i can move freely as i use my dart Revealing instead of putting it on the e which would be by default which i wouldn't be able to move to the right while i have my silva dart out or while pulling my silva dart out same thing for my shock dart something like my drone it's fine to just keep on c and then i have my ultimate on f and especially when you're thinking about characters like jet this is where i think you really should make changes to your keybinds because your dash is default binded to the e ability but i would rather you definitely keep that on a mouse button because your jet dash um, will dash you in the direction that you're going right so if i'm holding the left key it'll dash me left if i'm holding the right key it'll dash me right but if i have my dash on e then it makes it really awkward to dash to the right and like press my right keybind, my D key, and my E to both dash to the right. So definitely a keybind, especially for jet players, I would definitely not have on the default. I think having that on the mouse button is definitely the way to go when, when you're playing jet. As for some other movement keybinds, the biggest thing to note here is that I have my jump on my mouse wheel down. As long also with my space bar, I have it double bounded, but I don't really use the space bar that much. I have it on mouse wheel down as it makes my movement feel a lot more fluid, faster, and comfortable. Having it here, I can b-hop definitely more effectively. It feels a lot more comfortable as space bar feels really inconsistent sometimes. But if you're comfortable with space bar, that's perfectly fine and everything else here i pretty much have on the default and when it comes to equipment um you definitely most importantly do not want to be using your scroll wheel for your weapons you don't want to be using your scroll wheel to swap between your you know your primary weapon your secondary and your knife it's very slow and it's very inconsistent you can easily mess up you know in a pressure situation you swap to the wrong one when and the, it'll get you killed so you definitely want to use the individual keys for your inventory so i personally have my primary on one my knife on three my pistol on two but i also have my pistol double bounded to mouse wheel up because the two key does not feel very comfortable for me personally to be hitting with my index or my middle finger so i keep it on mouse wheel up and that just feels very comfortable to me you can try out something similar if those keys may be too hard for you to reach or are uncomfortable and other than that, I have my equip spike on four, which is pretty standard. Um, drop my equipped item on G, inspect weapon on B. Use object I keep on E uh, and it's default F, but I actually have my ultimate on F instead of X. And so to defuse the spike and plant the spike, I keep on my E key, which is just standard because I play other games where the interact key is normally on the E. So to just keep things consistent, I also have it to the E key in valorant now when it comes to your crosshair there are a lot of cool things you can do here there are a lot of different crosshairs you know we all know the standard cross cross here um you can do dot you can do something that's more rounded like this one uh, you could do a lot of different things and you can store up to 10 different profiles. The most important thing here, I think, is if you're a new player, you might want to have fade crosshair with firing error on. That way you can just know when you're inaccurate as the top of your crosshair will disappear when your spray starts to go random. And so that can give you a good indication that, hey, you need to stop spraying and you need to reset your aim so that you become accurate again. And you'll know as long as the top of your crosshair is up that your shots are going to be fairly accurate and fairly predictable as soon as it disappears you know you need to stop shooting so definitely something i recommend for newer level players now personally if you want to do like a standard static cross here you want to keep your center dot off and outlines i keep on on setting that way my crosshair is easier to see as it will put slight black edges on my crosshair which makes it stand out on certain backgrounds where it might be difficult to see my crosshair especially if people who use like white or blue crosshairs that are very light colors i think having an outline is very very helpful in that regard 
and then really when it, what it comes down to is your inner line that is where you'll see most of the customization for your crosshair comes from and when it comes to my inner lines i have mines at 213 with an inner line opacity of 0 0.9 most people i would say like 90 percent of people have an inner line opacity of one which is fine but i have like to have it on 0 0.9 and then my inner line length 213 you can change that up as you wish you can mess around with a lot of different stuff you can copy your favorite pros that you see Crosshair really isn't a big deal, but I definitely recommend having a static crosshair on, which remain, re, which, <laughs> God, I'm losing my words, which means removing any sort of firing error, movement error, all of that stuff that will make your crosshair open up or move while you're um, moving. That I, I, those dynamic crosshairs, I'm really not a fan of. It feels very weird. You just want consistency with your crosshair. So turning off those settings, I think is definitely the way to go when it comes to making a good crosshair. Now, when it comes to your audio settings, the most important thing here is that you have enable HRTF turned on. And as it says here, HRTF provides better 3D spatialization of sounds by approximating an average head shape for the listener. Effect will be applied to footsteps, reloads, and respawns. Please disable any other 3D audio processing applications while using HRTF. Now, this is a setting that wasn't there at the very beginning of Valorant, but is very helpful now that it is. And essentially, it allows you to have a more accurate understanding of where your enemies are by giving you a better picture of whether they're behind you um, next to you above you below you um, when they move when they reload it gives you a more accurate picture of where they really are and having it turned off you might get tricked a couple of times you might think they're below you but they're actually to the left of you so it definitely makes things a lot more accurate so i definitely highly recommend you turn it on it definitely does get some getting used to because it makes the audio sound a little funny at first but if you're a brand new player turn it on so that there is no adjustment phase that you're just good with it right And definitely another setting you got to be looking out for is NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. And this is if you're playing with an NVIDIA GPU. I definitely would recommend you put that to on plus boost, which basically better works with your GPU to give you less input lag in game, which is definitely something you want. Absolutely. So definitely put that to on plus boost as it will give you the most smooth experience with the least amount of lag. So definitely go for that. All right, and with that, I have covered all the really crucial and important settings you need to know when first starting out in Valorant. If you have any sort of question, anything you didn't understand, anything you're not super sure of, put it in the comments down below, and I'll try my best to get to each and every single one of those comments and let you know what you need to know. If you enjoyed this type of video, please drop a like, and if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thanks for watching, guys.